There are a lot of changes out there, and this video is going to address how to protect yourself in this ever-changing real estate market that we're currently in. Let's get into it. So the biggest change is this commission structure, right? Right now, the buyer is required to compensate their buyer's agent. Now, a lot of you sellers are out there are like, yeah, I don't have to pay my buyer's agent commission. Okay, bottom line is you never had to. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe that, but you never had to pay a buyer's agent commission. However, right now, the way real estate's working is that when your buyer makes an offer, they're going to be asking for a buyer's agent compensation or a buyer's agent concession. We no longer call it commission. It's called concession or compensation. So how this works, your buyer makes an offer to you. They go, here's my price, here's my terms. And then there's a separate page saying, this is what I'm requesting you to pay my buyer's agent concession or compensation. It ranges anywhere from one to two to 3%. It can be a flat fee. It can be any way they want to structure it, but they will more than likely be asking you to pay or compensate them for their buyer agent commission. So what I'm seeing right now is when the offers are coming in, I'm quite surprised at how high some of the buyer agent concessions are. So I'm seeing it range anywhere from two to 3% which if it's ranging from two to 3%, the buyer is agreeing to pay their agent two to 3%. But when they go make their offer, they're asking the seller, hey, can you pay this two to 3%? And now we negotiate, right? We negotiate terms. We can negotiate down the buyer's agent commission. We can negotiate everything. So for you sellers out there, you need to protect yourself. Realize when you're presented with an offer, every single one of those terms in that contract can be negotiated, especially that compensation for the buyer's agent. So if they're coming in with 3%, you know, you shouldn't be worried that, oh, if I don't agree to this 3%, they may not want to move forward with the offer. That's not true, right? right? It's not true. Everything's negotiable. And they might even start high expecting to be negotiated down. I quite like this new type of negotiation. For example, I had a property that we were under contract. The buyer's agent made a repair request of $20,000 on this property. And I'm like, what? So I call the seller up and I'm like, hey, we got this hefty you know, $20,000 repair request. I don't like it, do you? I don't like it either. I'm like, all right, let me negotiate. So I call the buyer's agent up and I'm like, hey, we don't like $20,000. How about we just not pay you a commission or reduce your commission down to maybe a flat fee? How does that sound? And then it's all even for the, the seller. And he was like, oh my gosh, no way. I'm not taking that, that's ridiculous. I'm like, great, then why don't you go back and do your job and get that repair request down to a reasonable number? Thank you very much. So we got the repair request down to $1,500. It's a beautiful thing, folks. You get to negotiate everything. <laughs> Love it. The sellers and the buyers are at the negotiating table. Now, this is something a lot of people aren't talking about, but I want my followers to know this. In MLS, we're not allowed to publish any commissions. However, look at this. I'll put it on the screen. It says here, that the seller will consider concessions in an offer. This is a screenshot right off MLS. And you will notice I say, yes, this is my own screenshot off my own computer. So just realize that there is a field in MLS that if you're a seller and you say, no, I'm not gonna participate, or yes, I am, the buyer's agent does have visibility in that. I don't wanna talk about any more because I can get myself <laughs> in trouble. If you are a seller and you mark that box no, just know that buyer's agents can see that. I'm not gonna make any further comment. Once again, I would highly recommend that you mark that box yes. It doesn't mean you have to, it just means you're open to it. You should be open to all offers. That would be my suggestion. This just happened this week. No one's talking about it. <laughs> it's a doozer. It's a doozer and it really can hurt you. So if you are thinking this happened in your neighborhood, you would wanna get documentation. So, and I don't know how this looks cause we're all making it up as we go right now, but I had an offer that was presented to me this week where the buyer had plenty of cash and he's like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make this offer. I'm not going to ask for a buyer's agent concession. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay my buyer on the side through escrow. I'm not gonna include it in the offer but I want my sales price lower. I want a $50,000 reduction because I'm gonna pay my buyer on the side. I'm not gonna pay it you know, through the offer process. And the reason why that buyer would wanna do that is because his property taxes are based on that lower number, right? The escrow and title fees are based on that lower number. My concession for the seller 
should be commission, but anyway, is also lower because it's calculated at a lower price. The seller is probably like, yeah, sounds great. I you know, have capital gains and now my price point just went down, saving me a little bit. In that incident, when I go to go close the sale down as a listing agent, I have no idea how much the buyer is paying their buyer's agent because it's not written in the contract. Did you guys hear me on that? So when I go fill out the closing statement in MLS saying, hey, this is the price of the house, I don't know what the buyer's paying the buyer's agent, so I can't disclose it. And you're like, who cares? Why do we care about that? The reason why you care about it, the reason why you care about it is because now you have a low comp in your neighborhood. You have a significantly lower comp in the neighborhood and it's artificially registering at a lower price which ain't great if you are in a neighborhood where this happens because an appraiser is gonna come in and appraise your house maybe at a lower price because it looks like the community is trending down based off this lower comp. I hope you guys followed that. This is a big, big problem in my opinion with this whole new compensation and the way that we're closing these sales. So how do you protect yourself against this? I'm sure we're gonna figure a way around it, but if you are in a neighborhood and you see your neighbor's house closed for a much lower price, I would even ask them like, hey, what happened here? You know, what's going on? And perhaps they would be willing to share what happened. And then if you ever do sell your house in the short term, you can explain to the appraiser. And the appraisers are kind of making it up now too. But it is something that you should be aware of. Watch the values of the homes. Sometimes they're artificially lower because of this dynamic that I just shared with you today. So be aware of it. Ugh, something we have to work out. I'm so excited. This is the best part of the whole program. I got to 50,000 subscribers. You guys have no idea how hard I worked to get here. It was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of difficult times as well. And a lot of you are reaching out and getting super excited for me. And I just want to say it's a privilege and an honor to educate you. I hope that I do assist in having you make wise decisions and protecting yourself in this ever-changing housing market. So thank you. And of course, you always can subscribe. I'm not begging. I'll beg next year like I promised. All right. Thank you so much. So for you buyers out there, and actually even for you sellers, make sure you know what you're signing. When I was a little girl, my mom and dad told me, Audra, don't ever sign any contract that you don't know what you're signing. And if you don't know what you're signing, don't sign it. So we have all these new rules and guidelines. The listing contract's different. The buyer's agent contract is, is much different too. Take the time to understand it. But here's the deal. A lot of you out there are signing documents you should not sign. You need to make sure you understand. And if you do not understand, you're not gonna sign it. All right, guys, uh, we gotta talk home insurance. It's a major problem. I mean, major, major. Uh, I just had a buyer back out. I was representing the seller because they were a little concerned about the home insurance and it was very costly to begin with. And then literally, and I can't make this up, the day contingency removals were due, a fire breaks out right behind them <laughs> on the house they were gonna purchase. And I mean, it was a monster fire, right? I'm like, are you kidding? Thankfully, the house wasn't engulfed, thankfully, but nonetheless, not the greatest circumstances. But here's the deal. Fire insurance, at least in California, I know some of you have like floods and some of you have tornadoes. We all have different homeowners insurance is becoming a problem. Now, the thing that's changed recently is in the purchase contract, it's actually considered a contingency. So the buyer has to get home insurance secured. And once they do that, then they can remove contingencies. The old purchase contract, that was not a stipulation. So it's like, hey, if you can't get home insurance, well, not my problem. But now it is something that's written in there. So the buyer can back out if they don't have or they don't get or they don't like the price of home insurance. And there's usually a duration of time that you're agreeing to that in a contract. Now I'm talking a lot about contracts and terms. I will link down a video just to go over like all the, the things that you should know about a contract terms, especially if you're new, it's a really good video if you need to understand some of the terms. I won't bore you with all the details in this video. So if you are selling your house and you're interviewing your agent, you need to ask them if they know of good homeowners insurance companies or brokerages. Right now, all the agents in my area, we're all working together to try to find insurance agents to assist. But if you are in an area that's ooh, a little bit difficult to insure, get ahead of it, get those quotes, make sure you're working with the right people. The agent that you're working with should be able to provide that information. Do not lag, try to get ahead of it. Okay, I'm a little disorganized today. I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but when I have a free moment, I just sit myself in front of the camera. I'm like, okay, what are we gonna talk about today? 
you know, and it's usually I try to bring in my life experiences from the previous week. So I don't have any of my videos batched. I got to get my act together. I watch these other YouTuber people out there and they got a team and they're coming up with topics. Nope, this is just Audra improvising. <laughs> oh my God, I'm kind of embarrassed to share that. But I will get my act together next year when I get to 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> okay, so this is today. This is what I'm going to talk about. That repair request. Now, if you are a seller, try to agree to a credit. Do not do your own repairs. Now, I know a lot of you sellers out there are like, no, 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 I can do it cheaper. It's just not a big deal. I just got to tighten the toilet. What's the big deal? It's a big deal, okay? The reason why it's a big deal is because that buyer can come back and not be satisfied with the way that you did it. Or let's say they take possession of the home after they sell it and you didn't do the repair properly. They can come after you. Now, the most important part of this whole thing isn't about just the credit, which is what you're going to do. You're going to really try to do the credit thing. Now, even when it comes to termite, if you have termites, you want to give a credit, okay? Let the buyer do that because they get to choose whatever company they want. And if you're using your company and they do a bad job or they come back, they can come back to you. You try to give as many credits as you can when selling your home, especially when things are a little slow and people aren't as happy. You want to protect yourself. But let's say you come up with some number, okay? Whatever the number may be. Now, most agents will recommend that you give a credit to the buyer towards closing costs if there's a loan involved. A credit towards buyer, so then they just take the proceeds and they take your money out. Hear this from me. Hear me, hear me. Okay, ready? Do not do that. Take the credit off the sales price. Just reduce the sales price, okay? And the reason why that's going to benefit you is because if you're a seller, you're paying those concessions off that lower price. Your title and escrow fees are also calculated off that price. And if you are a seller and you have capital gains, you get a lower sales price. Okay, now I know it's minor, but let's save every penny we can, right? I don't know about you, but I like to save money, right? Every penny counts. Okay, let me clarify. I'm not saying try to give a bunch of credits to the buyer. I'm just saying, if to get the deal done, you have to negotiate repairs. In that case, definitely give a credit. Ultimately, it would be great if you just sell the property as is. But if you are in that situation where you're up against kind of a, a tough buyer and you need to negotiate some repairs, I would say try to give a credit. All right, just a few other quick little, uh, just say helpful tips to protect yourself. When you're selling your home, you might want to up your home insurance. <laughs> I know it's expensive anyway. However, it's always a good idea, in my opinion, when selling your house to increase your limits. You never know what can happen, not to scare you, just protecting you. The second thing that I would recommend that you do is make sure you have those security cameras in place. It doesn't need to be expensive. It doesn't need to be ADP or all these special, you know, highfalutin security. You just want to know who's in your house and it keeps people honest, right? So have a security camera in the back, have a security camera in the front, I did that wrong. But anyway, you want to just keep an eye on things, right? So please do that. Now, probably the most important part of selling your home and even buying a home to protect yourself is hiring the right agent. I know, you guys, it's so hard. You're like, oh, my niece down the road or the gal, you know, that I go to coffee in the morning, she's a realtor. Yeah, probably not the right ones. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying you need to do your research. Now, a lot of you have reached out to me and asked if I knew people in your area. I do have a referral manager that assists me with that. If you're interested in having me, you know, give you some recommendations as to agents in your area, I'm happy to introduce you to my referral manager. Her name is Diana. I love her. She's awesome. And some of you have already had a really good experience with her. But anyway, hire the right agent. I will link down below a couple questions that you should be asking these agents that you're interviewing. One's for the buyer's agent. I have another list of questions for the listing agent. It's super important that you ask the right questions. You're going to trust but verify, okay, when you're interviewing these agents. They're not your friends. They are your representation. And you have to make sure you're hiring the right person. You're paying your agent a lot of money, so find the best one you can find. Just because you like them doesn't mean they're a good agent. Or because if they're a family member and you just feel obligated, like typically you want to have families and friends out of the transaction. If you're really mad, you should be able to scream and yell and, and not, you know, sever some of those friendships. Okay. So it's always good to have a professional in there, not a family or friend. Sometimes that works out, but not always. Just be cautious. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying weigh the pro and cons. Thank you so much for the 50,000 subscriber votes. I cannot thank you enough. It just made my whole week. Oh, I did it. Anyway, please comment down below if you have any topics that you would like me to discuss because I'm kind of going to try to batch these videos so I can get more to you so you will have more education and more enjoyment. All right. Thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next one.